everyone, I'm Steve Reville from Express Open and uh, today I was going to talk a bit about what goes on inside Risk OS Open and um, what we're all about. Um, so the company was um, initially conceived, oh, right, let's stop this, sorry, sorry, sorry. Technology, yeah? Yes. Yeah, let's just do it the old fashioned way. Right. It's doing the presentation on my laptop screen. Uh, yeah, the com company was initially conceived back in 2006 when we were um, a group of ex Acorn employees concerned about the state of Risk OS and its potential future. Because at that time, it was a closed source operating system that was created by Acorn Computers and then taken over by Castle Technology. Um, and as far as we could see, because it was closed source and because the sales of um, RiskOS compatible hardware were on the decline, um, there wasn't very much future for it. So one plan we hatched was to try and open source the operating system and get a whole community of people involved in maintaining it and developing it in the future. Um, so day to day, although there are six shareholders of the company, day to day there's only really three of us. Um, involved. Uh, that's myself, Andrew Hodgkinson and Ben Averson. Andrew Hodgkinson recently emigrated to New Zealand, so he's on a slightly reduced role <laughs> than he used to be. Um, but he's still in touch, he still did a few things to help out um, this week with the show preparation. <clears throat> we also have a few honorary members in the community who help out a lot behind the scenes. Many of you will have heard of um, Jeffrey Lee. Uh, he was initially responsible for getting RiskOS running on the Beagle board, which was a very important step. Uh, we've also got Robert Sproson, who's helping man the stands today, um, and he helps with sales and merchandise. So every time you place orders for stuff on our website, it's Rob that handles the orders and handles all the inquiries relating to that. He also uh, looks after quite a lot of code submissions for us, so when people have changes for RiskOS source code, he will make sure that that gets into the source tree and built into new images. Um, and we also have Theo Marquetus, who works at the University of Cambridge Computing Department. Um, and he does lots of things in the background like package management and all sorts of other stuff. Um, so we also have lots of other people who help out regularly um, with things like wiki page updates and maintaining things. Um, doing press releases for us, so helping us edit our press releases. So there's loads of little jobs behind the scenes going on, um, and quite a few things that we could get other people in to help with. So, yeah, I've said that it was first conceived in 2006 and incorporated on 20th of June that year. Um, <coughs> it took us a little while to get any source code published, and we did it in dribs and drabs to start with. We had little batches of source code and all of the processing that we needed to do to get the source code out in open source, like removing swear words and things like that. That's a time-consuming process. Checking for any patent infringement and copyright infringement and who owns what. It's amazing the state of the software and how most of it, no one knew where it came from, where the sources were and how it worked and who owned it even. So that was quite time-consuming. Um, and then we launched a bounty scheme in 2011, and this, the idea of that was to allow the community to um, vote with their wallets on how RiskOS gets developed in future. So all the main features that we think are important, we create a bounty for them and allow people to donate money into them. And um, sometime around a similar time, we had. Um, the Beagle Board release of RiskOS. <coughs> so that really was a milestone for us because it was someone taking the published source code and making it work on a new piece of hardware. And that was one of our objectives right from the start. So that was really good. And it's been just a springboard for all of the other ports like Pandalords and Raspberry Pis that have happened since then. Um, I, I have to mention the Raspberry Pi because it's been so important to the exposure that RiskOS gets. Uh, at the end of 2012, we released our port onto that platform uh, very sh shortly after the platform itself was released. Um, 
and straight away that's taken risk of us from a market of a few thousand people to a few hundred thousand people, if not millions. So it's completely, it's a different environment. For example, quite often I post things on Facebook um, just to say what's going on at Riscos Open and we'll get a couple of hundred people will view a post. Um, I posted something the other day about um, RiskOS being running on the Pi Compute module, which hasn't even been released publicly yet. And that post, because it was um, shared by the Raspberry Pi community, got um, almost about 9,000 views in a, about a day. So it's crazy. Um, we organised a show last year in Port and we've not got any immediate plans to organize another one, but it was a good experience and it was a, a learning curve for us and we definitely would like to do another one in the future. We just haven't settled on how, when and where it will be. One of the problems with doing it in Portsmouth is you'd be right on the coast. So straight away if you draw a circle around it and say, who's going to come to it? <laughs> <laughs> Half of your audience is the sea. So. <coughs> Yeah, a lot of red herrings. So potentially we won't do that um, a coastal show in the it, it, next show. You could show. actually arrange it around the areas where the train lines join up. Yes. Because um, it's one of the main sort of problems when you travel from one place to another place to another place. That's um, so you find it very difficult. It's like you have to travel from the railway station in Mexico to New York just to get down to Europe by the way. Yeah, that would definitely be a consideration is the public transport implications. Some of the shows, the risk of our shows are very tricky to get to. So, so sometimes it's hard to see what we do um, all the time. Um, and obviously we're a spare time thing. It's not our full time job. We don't pay ourselves for our time. And we've been doing it since 2006. There's been a vast amount of work. I think we estimated it was about um, at least a man year each for Ben, Andrew and I, um, and a lot of administration, so that's the company administration, the boring VAT returns and company returns and all of that stuff, talking to the accountants, um, and we have loads of other background administration like keeping the website going and updating forums, answering people's questions, answering emails. Um, Publicising risk of coming to shows is important. Doing stuff on Facebook, stuff on Twitter, <coughs> trying to reach as many people as we can. That's important to us. Um, it's no good having risk of there if nobody knows it's there. So we have to try and reach as many people as possible. Merchandising, fundraising is very important. We couldn't do what we do without people donating money to the company and buying our merchandise. All the profits just get ploughed straight back into what the company does. Um, we don't take the profits and pay ourselves with them. Um, development, so there's a lot of stuff goes on behind the scenes in terms of development of Risk OS. So there's um, projects that aren't publicly known, so stuff that's under NDA. There are things like working hand in hand with Raspberry Pi to get Risk OS working on their new Pi compute module. Um, there's loads of little bits and bobs going on as well as the public development, occasionally we actually manage to find some time to write some code that you get to see. And there's managing the development that the community does. So every time someone submits some code, we have to check it and put it in our repository and make sure it builds and all that kind of thing. We also, um, we have to check for any license violations because it's amazing that sometimes people will give you something and it's taken from somewhere else but we've not checked that we've got permission to publish it so that that's something that happens the bounty scheme itself has a lot of development associated with it. the whole point of it is that people can sponsor bits of development um, and that's quite a lot of work the EDID bounty which in a nutshell is about making RiskOS dynamically support when you plug in a monitor it can talk to the monitor figure out what the monitor can do and choose the right resolution straight out, uh, straight out of the box. It can also list what other supported re resolutions a monitor can do. This is quite useful. So we created the EDID bounty and we've had someone working on that for quite a few months. But there's quite a lot of back and forth and questions and answering and um, reviewing their source code changes. So before a bounty ever gets accepted and the money gets paid to the person who took on the work, 
and there's a lot of work for us behind the scenes. So this is my silly graph of RISC-OS exposure. Um, when we started, RISC-OS really did look like it was in a death spiral. There was very little going on. Um, the market was shrinking and the number of people involved in it was getting smaller year by year. Um, but since we started, I'm not saying this is actual genuine data, it's just completely made up. But since we started, um, we've seen significant increases in all kinds of metrics. So we look at how many people are posting to our forums, how many things are being checked into the source tree, how many people are reading our posts on Facebook, how many people are downloading things, how much stuff we're how much traffic we're shipping from our website. It's all going up in a curve. It's not just a straight line. It's actually increasing almost exponentially. And since the Raspberry Pi release, we've reached this massive audience. We've seen these huge increases in what's going on. Um, one not so good fact is donations haven't been tracking the same upward <laughs> curve. So although the amount of interest has been increasing, the amount of people using risk OS, the amount of questions we're fielding and work we're doing, uh, the donations actually, they had a bit of a peak when we started off and um, people got the hang of them and the bounty scheme is the same. Um, but we've seen it tailing off more and more over the past year or so. So, um, kind of as a bit of a humorous exercise, we just decided if Risk OS Open were trying to be a commercial enterprise, we'd be looking at lots of numbers to try and figure out what, what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. Um, so I'll share some of the numbers that we came up with. Um, NutPi sales, um, we've, we've sold over 16,000 pounds worth of NutPies since we first released that. So that's only in a couple of years. Uh, and the important thing to know about that is that pretty much all of that money goes to the people that contributed the software <coughs> to the NutPi. Virtually none of that goes to RiscOS Open itself. But it's useful to know that th that money is feeding into the developer community because the developers are just as important, we, we believe, as the users. You've got to have people writing and maintaining the software. Um, so there's been over 500 uh, Risk OS Pi SD cards sold by us. Um, there could be any number more sold by Arcomp and CJE in their products, and there could be uh, far more sold by Raspberry Pi themselves through Farnell and um, other people. So there's loads of SD cards with Risk OS on them have been sold over the last few years. Um, we believe 500 just by us donations coming into Risk OS Open. So we looked at the numbers for that and think since we started accepting donations via our websites, we've had about three and a half thousand pounds of donations, which it sounds quite good, but then you think about it in terms of say Risk OS Select subscriptions, that's about <coughs> 35 subscribers in three years. So that's not very, that wouldn't be very good as a commercial business. Um, also, We've served about one and a half terabytes of downloads since 2011. Um, that's an enormous number, I think. That's about 160,000 complete downloads of RiskOS related stuff. So a lot of people are getting stuff and looking at stuff and trying RiskOS out. Um, but if we work out how much money has come in per download, then it's about six pence per download that people are contributing. Um, so we should probably push that angle a bit harder on the download page. Um, but another thing that's very encouraging is we've been seeing about 50, on average, about 50 commits into our CVS repository. And that is the central source code dump for RiskOS. So we're seeing about 50 different things happening that people have contributed to RiskOS every month at the moment. Um, and if you're very generous, well, very conservative, and you said it was about half a Monday per commit, then that's about 300 Mondays of development work has happened every year um, on risk, the open source risk OS, which is fantastic news. And I think that's a massive underestimate. I think realistically, the number's several times bigger than that for the amount of work that people are putting into risk OS behind the scenes. Um, 
but by my reckoning, that's about 78p per man hour of work. So you'd probably be better off if you wanted to make money doing selling that stuff. Um, well, about eight times better off as it happens. Um, we do have lots of different ways of getting in touch with us as well. This is all on our website. Um, but we have our forums where you can just get involved with the community. You can ask questions. You can help answer questions from other people. Um, we have our wiki pages, which are where we keep all our documentation. And anyone can edit them. So that's a great place for people to contribute their knowledge, even if they're not a developer. You can contribute your experiences and your knowledge like this piece of software works on the Raspberry Pi, this one doesn't, all of that kind of stuff. And we have a whole load of different email addresses, um, so to try to direct people to the right place, because although we do try and respond to stuff quickly, uh, sometimes we are a bit swamped. Um, so it helps to go to the right people in the first place. So that's pretty much it from me talking about behind the scenes, uh, but I'm happy to answer all the questions that you might have. Uh, one of the things I was wondering about is when you're mentioning that the, the things that work compatible are things that weren't compatible. Mm -hmm. Do you find things that work on something like the Swan? Yeah. How, how much easier is it to get that converted to work on the Raspberry Pi? Uh, for the most part, that's fairly straightforward. It's if it works on a strong arm, it's usually a 32 bitting exercise, and this yeah. is kind of a well documented process. It's harder if you haven't got the source code for it. Um, You've also got Amulor available for various versions of RISC OS 5, and that will run strong arm type software directly. I've heard of it, now where do you get it? Sorry? I've heard of it, now where do you get it? Ah, uh, Google. Uh, yeah, I can't tell you off the top of my head, but. Spelling was on it. Right, okay. I think there's various different versions of it for different platforms. Some of them are free, and some of them are not free. Yes. There is a specific one for the Raspberry Pi which is not free, it's only 15 bit. Yeah. And it works. Yeah. Okay. Right, okay. Right. Right. <coughs> I think you know, it's probably a good first port of call. Yeah. Hi. I have a question, but I would like to invite the people here to join me in thanking this concert for the tremendous work it's done and it's doing. Uh, I'm astonished that, uh, that all this has happened practically for free. Yeah, of course. Thank you very much. Five or six years. Yeah, well, yeah. Thank, thank you very you much. much. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> if it wasn't, if Rob wasn't manning the stand, he was threatening to stand by the door with a bucket and not let him. <laughs> hey, for us. Um, it was the whole thing initially started as just uh, a preservation exercise. So our genuine pessimistic view was it's all going to die, it's got no future, but we don't want it to disappear into a black hole if Castle ceases trading and disappears. So what we want to do is at least publish the source code, get it out there on the internet where nothing ever goes away. Someone's got a copy of it somewhere. And at least then it's preserved for posterity. And all of the other stuff was kind of in our pessimistic, the back of our mind, it was the secondary goal, was build a community, get it, get people doing stuff, um, try and develop it further, try and even bring it up to date and allow it to run on new hardware. That was just almost the impossible dream. We had another impossible dream was to have uh, an emulator that you could get for free so you could try RiskOS on your Windows PC or your Mac or a Linux box and you could get all of the bits for it for free off the internet and just download them, install them, and off you go. So all of those 95% or whatever it is of people out there with a Windows PC could just try RiskOS and go, oh yeah, that's quite good, I'll have a play. And maybe they would grow the community, but now that's happened, we're in that position where we can do that. We, we sell it on our stand as a convenience, we've done all the legwork of putting it all onto a USB stick. But the, the bottom line is that you can just download all that stuff yourself. So I think we've achieved more than we ever set out to do. It's been a labour of love, but we 
we all came from Acorn and we worked on this stuff for our day job and we just couldn't bear to see it all disappear. <laughs> and we're still, you know, still using Risk OS machines day in, day out as well. And it's just nice to know that the whole thing has a future. So, uh, on donations then, mm. um, so what are the options to do donations and how easy is it to have like regular sets of donations? Yeah, we have, um, we have the bounty scheme, so you can directly contribute, put some money in a pot, which is set aside for doing particular bits of development work, and the person who does that development work will get the pot if they successfully complete the job. There's a, a special pot just set aside for Risk OS Open General, and that's contributing to, our, to us, and we will just decide we might put that in other donation, uh, other bounty pots occasionally if we find a surplus. Um, or we'll spend it coming to shows or whatever. Um, there's also on our donations page, there is a recurring donation button. And I think you can choose five, 10 or 20 pounds a month even. And we have got some people doing 20 pounds a month, it's fantastic. But generally, you know, five pounds a month, perfectly good. So, so what are the options, PayPal? Uh, I think you can do, it's, it is all via PayPal, but I think you, you have the option to not be using PayPal, I think you can just use your card directly. So you kind of, it's via the PayPal site, but you're not having to create all the PayPal accounts. Uh, or of course you could just send us a check in the post, that's also an option. Um, yeah, this, seeing us at the stand at the show, that's, I mean, it's always good to meet people and find out who's using it and what their questions are. Um, that's a good opportunity. Just buying merchandise from us is really, it's just a donation. That's ultimately what the merchandise is for, just to galvanise people to chuck a bit more money in the pot. But I mean, I, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining about it because that's not the point. The point is this is a voluntary organisation. Um, but it's, it, it's important to know that, especially with the bounties, it's a bit of a, a pet peeve of mine, is that it's difficult to find that balance where um, there's enough money in a pot to pay for someone to do that big lump of work because you either feel motivated, after, well I think this is true for most people who have the skills, is they'll feel motivated to do something for free if they're really interested in it or they'll be motivated to do something that they're not that interested in but there's a decent amount of money in the pot to pay for it. But if you find yourself in that middle ground where you're not that interested in it and the pot is a very negligible amount it, these these things just tend to sit there and, and, and not get claimed. So we're seeing that with some of the bounties, they're just a bit stalled and they're not going anywhere. And I don't, I'm a bit reluctant to introduce more bounties because people always have other ideas of, you could do a bounty for this, you could do a bounty for that. But the danger there is we have a lot of bounties and dilute the, the pot even more. So people have some money and go, I don't know what to put it in. Um, curiosity, does it, do it have, I haven't actually looked at it, does it actually tell you that somebody's actually working on this? Yeah, I can show you this if you want. Because it, it was my thought of being, well, somebody, somebody's already working on that, they probably, probably have done it before they ever finished it. Yes, you, you get in touch with us to claim a bounty, basically. Yeah. Um, there is one slight tweak that we need to make that to allow people to con continue donating to a, a bounty even though it's been claimed. But yes, so there's, there's the edit one, as I've said, is underway. And we've got these ones open well, at the moment. Well, I, I, you know, I mean, the first time I clocked in, my last retired, and I don't, and I don't use it. Yeah, you know, can't get out of it. Um, and I put that in. It gave me an automatic monitor detection on, on my HP um, monitor. Yeah. For HD. The only strange thing about it is that it displays a screen and it's got roughly about two thumb width all the way around the edge of it, rather yeah. than being right out to the edge. Yeah, or overscan or stuff. That, you'll find that in the forums <laughs> discussed ad nauseum. Yes, that's a common uh, issue that people have with different monitors. Um, the Raspberry Pi is quite complicated as well because the Raspberry Pi um, has, it does the monitor auto negotiation itself, and that's independent of RISCOS. RISCOS never sees any of that stuff. So the Raspberry Pi is rescaling risk OS desktop, no matter what mode the risk OS desktop is, it's onto the monitor, so. I wonder what's your, if, if, if the DPI 
I think it's. I think it, you'll find it's the configuration file in the little fat partition. Yeah. There's a magic thing about overscan that you chuck in there and it sorts that out. So strictly speaking, that's nothing to do with Ristos. No, that is a Raspberry Pi side of it. But it's on our forums, so there's plenty of people that have encountered that and found a way to work around it. So if, if, you have, if I start Linux or if you just resize this uh, Linux is complicated because it will have different configuration files yeah. to risk us. It's nothing to do with Linux either. No. It's just that they've sorted of the configuration out and you haven't. But it's not a risk of us issue. Yeah. It's, it's a monitor issue. It's a monitor issue it, and a Raspberry Pi issue. Yes. So it, it's completely independent of risk of us and Linux. <coughs> I don't know where, whether Linux is able to talk to the firmware in a different way and work well, around it. Well, RiscoS could, if it wanted to, yes, it's just write to the configuration file and write yeah. things to it, that, um, but it doesn't, yes. but I mean, it could do. Yeah. Could you explain right. what the filing system improvements are? Uh, yes, uh, this is a, a very big job, basically, we estimated, so we tried to arbitrarily break it down into chunks of work. And the ultimate goal is to allow RISC-OS to coexist on one filing system, on one disk, say an SD card, with other operating systems, so you have partitions. So basically you can say this bit belongs to Linux and this bit belongs to RISC-OS and so on. Because um, RISC-OS file systems at the moment have no comprehension of the idea of a partition. And nearly all modern operating systems install themselves as several partitions for different bits. And RiskOS really is, has great difficulty uh, coexisting in that environment. Um, the other problem you got with RiskOS is that it, it just can't cope with modern file sizes and modern disk sizes as well. So that's an important part of this. So all you need to do is to rewrite ZFS to, to yeah. write the RiskOS. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. But it would be nice to have RiskOS natively, uh, the file core file system, um, support partitions and it is very complicated to be honest um, but we've tried to break it down into slightly more manageable chunks um, and if you do click on it it does give you a description but I will be the first to admit this is quite technical um, so we tried to give a very high level human readable overview of what we're trying to do and then we give the more technical details for someone who's actually looking to claim the bounty potentially and then we'll just allow people to email us. So we did have someone claim this bounty. I don't know if anyone spotted that, but the file system step two bounty was claimed for a while. But unfortunately, for personal reasons, the developer who was working on it had to pull out uh, for family reasons. So um, that's not actually progressed very far at all. So we're back in the position now where this has been reopened and we're hoping for someone else to come along and claim it and do the work. Just out of curiosity, but got my RISC C F five eight six five it's got it's got formatted um dot formats on it. Yeah. <coughs> it's been formatted on the hard drive and that sort of working on that in another sort of way. Uh you you basically adding partitions for which is what one of the things that should come out of the step two bounty is would allow you to have DOS partitions yeah. and risk OS ones, file core ones coexisting. At the moment we found uh, some utterly magic trick to allow it to work on, say, the Raspberry Pi. Um, even more magic to make it work on their noobs distribution. I don't know if, if you've ever heard of that. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a download you can get with <coughs> lots of different OS's and you choose which one you want to install yeah. at any given point. But to, to get that to actually work with RiskOS is a right pain. Like, so RiskOS just can't get its head around partitions. Can I ask you, I seem to remember that the uh, Symtec filing system for their format and snacking yeah. packages does permit you to put partitions. Yeah, it's all a bit... Is it a bit of a um, gamble? I've never used well, it. Well, it's, it's not central to the OS. It's all a bit um, off, in, off in one corner for that. And it's but equally it's a bit primitive as well nowadays. Um, and that wouldn't address a lot of the other fundamental problems we've got, like big disks and big yeah. files. So, yeah. Well, right, not to be tempted to use it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, 
I do. It works in, in the case, you know, in, in the cases that it worked when it was developed. Yes, yeah, sure. But yes, that'll do. Nowadays, <coughs> you'd be taking your chances, I think. When are you, what is your aspiration for a stable release of the ROM for the panel forward? Um, we don't really have a target in mind. It's, for the most part, it's about someone adopting it, some third party, usually a commercial third party, adopting it and saying they're willing to give this version their stamp of approval. So like we have our company <coughs> release, and we have Castle for the Ionics. Um, we need a similar sort of thing for the pan board, where someone will say, I'm going to verify, vouch for this and say it's stable. And at that point, we can freeze that version of it and put it on our website as the stable release. Um, so that's just a case of speaking to the CJEs and our comps of the world and seeing who wants to do that sort of thing. There's, there's a notice out saying that the panda board's been discontinued or is about to be. Right. Yeah. So I thought that means it's Is it? Yes. Because their stocks are very low at the moment. Yeah. There is a there's a note sent from the manufacturer. Well, we're not sh we're not short of other no, uh, up and coming platforms that would be equivalent. I think. So. What would be the next target? Sorry. What would be the next target? I I I don't want to sound like I'm ducking the question, but I don't really think we're in a position to know that sort of thing because I think it's more the commercial companies now that are, that are looking at doing that sort of thing. They they will pick something that works for them, like CJ and our comp. They will pick something that works for them and get risk guys working on it to a degree that they're happy with. And for the most part, we're just bystanders in that whole process, unless we're asked to help do the port. So you wouldn't kind of start looking at specific targets and if any of them are more suitable than others. Um, that way. No, I think we've got enough keeping <laughs> us busy. I think the commercial people stand to benefit from it rather than us. So we're happy to let other people do that legwork. I'd like to know what, what the position is with security of, of internet transactions with yep. SQS. Yeah. Uh, you've got SSL in things like NetSurf. <coughs> uh, it's probably not the latest and greatest. That's, um, although I, the NetSurf guys are on um, they have a stand here today, yeah, so they, yeah, they fix the bug on stand. I would definitely speak to them because I can't really tell you off the top of my head. The initiatives can be made now that we won't get hacked. Sorry? <laughs> the initiatives can be made now that we won't get hacked. Yep. Hi. I noticed I, uh, I noticed about a month ago, I just read it quickly, the Raspberry Pi Foundation have donated quite large sums of money to all their operating systems. Yep. Given the growth of risk costs, um, shouldn't we be getting some of that from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, or have we received any? It, we, we haven't to date. It would be nice to see that happen in the future. Uh, we do have quite close ties with the guys at the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Yeah. Um, uh, I think any type of investment, uh, I don't know whether this would count as an, an investment, but normally investors are looking for a return on investment, and I don't know if that's what the Raspberry Pi Foundation have been trying to do, or whether they're genuinely just donating some money to try and spur things along. But most investors look at things like a 10 time return on investment, and we can't come back to anyone with a business case that says, if you give us 50 grand, we'll give you 500 grand in two years time. Yeah, I think it, I don't, I don't know if it's more of a donation, I think, actually. Yeah. Um, well, that would be brilliant if we could um, negotiate one with them. Um, but yeah, there's, there's not been anything so far, but uh, we'll keep our ears open. Mm. One last question? Or are we all, all satisfied? Okay, well, thank you all. Thank you all for listening. Cheers.